Testing, 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 testing. Hi, my name is Brila Duhame, and I'm interviewing my boyfriend, Nicholas Tiagostino, because he's an inspiration to me. <laughs> so, Nicholas, tell me about your disease and how it was growing up in school. I have a disease called spinal muscular atrophy. Um, also, my twin brother, Anthony, um, who is filming this interview, shout out, Anthony. Um, <laughs> Uh, has it as well because we're identical twins. It's a genetic trait. My mom has the recessive gene. My dad has the recessive gene. And the chances of them meeting each other were next to none. The chances of us having it were next to none. Um, but we're very lucky people. So um, we have it. It's a neuromuscular disease, basically. Um, we walked until we were six years old and then got too big to carry our weight anymore. And um, we're just weak. There's no paralysis, no anything. It's just our entire bodies are like a toddler, pretty much. So, um, what kind of surgeries did you have to have because of that? Or did you have any surgeries because of that? Um, when we were, I've had several surgeries. When we were eight, we had scoliosis really bad. And we had a stainless steel rod put in each of our spines um, at Newark University Hospital. Um, always fun being in the ghetto, you know. Uh, How old were you when that happened? I was eight, eight years old. Um, so again, kind of, kind of too young to realize what was going on and be traumatized by it. I remember crying when I went into the surgery for the first time. And they were going to put me to sleep, um, and my mom being there and all that. But you wake up and it feels like ten seconds later, you know, under anesthesia. Um, so that was, that was rough. We had staph infections from that, and then a couple more surgeries to, to fix it. Um, specialists from around the country fly in to try to figure it out. My temperature was 104.7 um, at one point, and then we were on intravenous the entire summer for like three months. Um, so that was a pretty, pretty rough experience, but, you know, got through it. So. And what got you through that? Um, I think just, you know, my family, obviously, uh, I think having a brother going through the same thing um, really helps because I'm not alone and I have someone to share my experiences with. Um, my parents have always been amazing, taking care of us, driving us to school. Um, it's a really rare situation, first of all, to have twins, to have twins in wheelchairs. It's, it's even more rare. And um, I think... You know, friends from the community came and they brought us dinner. And you know, friends that were nurses came and helped us out. And it was a, uh, it was really a community effort, I think, to get us through the hard times in uh, in Wanage, where we where we live, and have lived our entire lives. So, so and um, tell me, what are your interests? What do you um, like to do? I think uh, poetry is my main interest. But uh, it started career really interest. Career interest, poetry. Poetry. <laughs> <laughs> I yeah. know I get I get scolded because I got my associates here at Sussex County Community College and then stopped. But I just wasn't passionate about school at the at the time, and I want to help people. Um, I started writing poetry legitimately when I was 15, um, sophomore in high school. Entered a creative writing class. Um, before that. I guess I started when I was 12, when I thought it was a cute way to ask a girl out. Um, but it's, uh, it's been a blessing. I mean, I think the chair in, in many ways helps, um, help, helps inspire people because if I was an athlete or, you know, had been fed, fed with a silver spoon, people wouldn't listen to me. But I think because they could see that obviously I've had some sort of obstacles in my life they at least want to hear what I have to say, and then what I have to say is up to me. Um, so I think growing up, that's always been a plus. I think people have put trust in me, and I've developed a lot better friendships because this is kind of weeds out the superficial, you know, for, for lack of a better term. And um, it, was, it was rough growing up as far as love because, you know, girls are always after the athlete, the quarterback, the whatever, and it's always wanted to be my best friend but never wanted to be in a relationship. Um, but they say that good things come to those who wait, 
And uh, now I feel like it's true. Because <laughs> I have an awesome girlfriend named Brie Love Duhane. And, uh, <laughs> and it's awesome. Um, it was kind of the missing piece. Um, so now I feel even more enthused about life and my poetry and helping people. Because um, I'm part of a team now. And it's not just not just me anymore. Good. And uh, <laughs> would you say that you do motivational <laughs> Motivational speaking because of your disease. Um, I think so. Yeah. I think um, I think I have an ability to understand people um, because I've had to deal with so many situations in my life, and obviously um, immature and unexperienced in a, no a number of ways as far as having jobs, bills, stuff. Other people my age have done that I haven't had the opportunity so much because of my situation. Um, but I think I try to speak about, you know, it could always be worse. Oh, someone always has it worse. Um, overcoming, um, faith is a huge part of it. I talk about not so much preaching, um, as I'm a Christian. Um, I don't preach Jesus Christ so much to people as much as I just preach. Have faith in something bigger than yourself. Um, because we are not the center of the universe at all. Um, I used to think I was, <laughs> and I used to have this heavy burden on my shoulders and think, well, what could I have done to fix that? Why did that happen? That's my fault. Stuff that I had nothing to do with. Um, like I said, in the extreme scenarios on 9-11, I was thinking, well, what could I have done to prevent this? And I'm, you know, a 12-year-old kid sitting there watching it in front of the TV. Um, and it was unhealthy. So, um, you know, everyone has someone to look up to. And I have people to look up to. Um, and I try to be that to other people. So, do you have a job right now, Nicholas? I do. Um, I work for an online newspaper, a national paper actually. It's called The Revered Review. Um, my, my friend Jessica Zumo started it back in um, March um, of last year. And it's been a little over a year now, and um, we've been really blessed. We were on the Glenn Beck show. Um, she just spoke in Washington, D.C. at CPAC with um, Mitt Romney and Newt Gingrich and Rick Santorum all spoke there, Sarah Palin. Um, so that was huge. And we're basically cover small town America. So it's not local news, but we find stories in other small towns, including ours, er around the country. and we bring to light inspiring stories or things that need change and um, try to bring it to a national level and because it really starts in the small town it starts from small and gets bigger it doesn't start start from big government and all that so that's my job and I do a little bit of everything I, I'm always on Facebook and Twitter so my title is social media strategist um, so I get to sit on Facebook and Twitter all day basically and that's mm -hmm. my job. And what are your hobbies? What do you like to do? I like to listen to music. Music gets me through a lot. Um, depends on my mood. If I'm mad, I'll listen to rap and want to punch a hole in the wall. If I um, need to be inspired, um, I listen to Christian music. Um, it's really, it really varies. I love country music. Um, I'm just a fan. I think it brings out emotions. Um, I love sports. Uh, Mets, Rangers, Knicks, Giants, um, die hard since I was born. Uh, my dad brought me up and my brother up that way. Um, Giants just won the Super Bowl, Rangers are in the playoffs. Um, Knicks are in the playoffs. Mets are still horrible, um, but I'm used to that. And then video games. Um, I love playing Xbox Live. I've been playing since I was like four on video games and with my brother. and. Uh, it's like our sport almost. We're, we relied on it in a team atmosphere, and um, we were ranked like top 10 in the world in several games, and it's fun to be relied on. And if we lose, it's my fault, and if we win, it's my fault. So that's what I do um, in my spare time and uh, spend time with my girlfriend. And so tell me about your experience at SCCC. SCCC. Start here, go anywhere. Um, no, seriously though, it was, it was an awesome experience. Um, I grew very close to the students and the faculty. 
um, while I was a student here. I'm still involved. Um, I still do shows, help out with Relay for Life. Um, still involved in the SECC community, uh, but I really I recommend it to anyone. It was it was great. I mean, it's a good transition from high school to college, especially for me. You know, with a disability, um, it's people I know and something I'm familiar with. So it was awesome. Thank you, Nicholas. Thank you, Brilo. Yeah, I, sound, I know this would sound very unprofessional. Would it be okay if I kissed you right now? Um, I think that would be more than okay. Cool. Would it be okay if I told you I loved you right now? Maybe, yeah, sure. I love you. I love you too. And that is the end of the interview. Wait, should I? <laughs> can you stop this? I know this sounds kind of unprofessional, but would it be okay if I kissed you right now? <laughs> <laughs> Are you serious? You missed. <laughs> I love you. Tell me you love me. Uh, I love you. Thank you. You're welcome. So what are we having for dinner? We're no, dinner. we're having an interview right now, Nick. We're not asking you about dinner. I like dinner. I'm hungry. No. Please. We have to finish this. This is your homework project, eh? We just did a French project. Yes, we did. And I don't even speak French. Pretty are sure you filming this? He's <laughs> <laughs> I knew he was. <laughs>